think anybody's here for, for this part anyway. Okay, we'll call the City Council a public hearing August 21st, 2024 at 6.53 p.m. Roll call, please. Uh, Mayor Allison. Here. Tom Baylor. Here. Kathy Sherman. Here. Casey Kinson. Here. Wendy Rainey is absent. David Zastro. Here. Kristen Carpenter. Here. Ken Jones. Here. That's a quorum of council. Okay, uh, public hearing tonight is on ordinance 1219. An ordinance of the Council of the City of Cordova, Alaska, amending Chapter 5.38, Biennial Motor Vehicle Registration Tax to increase the motor vehicle registration tax levied on registered vehicles within the city. Anybody have any comments on that particular item? And I don't see anybody coming up for that. We do have, for those online, we've got a half a dozen people in the audience, but nobody wishing to comment on this item, so um, we'll do it going once, going twice. Okay, we'll, we'll adjourn the public hearing. We'll start the regular meeting here in about five minutes. City Council meeting of August 21st, 2024 at 7 p.m. to order. Please stand and join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mayor Allison. Here. Tom Baylor. Here. Kathy Sherman. Here. Casey Kinsman. Here. Wendy Rainey is absent. Dave Zastro. Here. Kristen Carpenter. Here. Ken Jones. Here. It's quorum of council. Okay, disclosures of, oh, approved regular agenda. Any objection to the agenda? There are no object objections. The agenda will be approved. Disclosures of conflicts of interest and ex parte communications. Yes, Mr. Mayor. I'd uh, like to recuse myself from, I think it's number 14, Ordinance 1220, uh, direct conflict with uh, my employer being affected by this. So, also, for the record, anyone in the public to know that I did, I had nothing to do to pull this ordinance board. I have made comment on this ordinance. But it is not forward as an ordinance because of me pulling it forward, and I would not have called this to come forward as an ordinance, especially given I'd have to recuse myself. So let that be known. Okay, we'll consider you have a conflict there. Any other conflicts of interest? That still leaves, yeah, we still got two. Yeah. Um, any other conflicts? Ex parte communication? Okay, hearing none then, we'll move on to communication five, division of visitors. We have no guest speakers for audience comments regarding any agenda items. Don't say your name and address and your comments. Three minutes. <coughs> Mark Frey, 813 Woodland Drive. Um, I'm here to talk on ordinance 1220. A couple things on Ordinance 1220, when this first came up, um, it was kind of brought back memories of living in Kodiak and personal property tax on airplanes. So that was kind of a what set most of this off. Reading through this, I see that uh, private use airplanes for uh, owned airplanes that are not commercial are exempt, which is a good thing. Um, some of the other issues that I have with this ordinance this seems to be targeting Alaska Airlines. Um, 
because they're the only scheduled air carrier that comes into Cordova. Alaska Airlines comes here based upon an EAS contract, Essential Air Service. So the government pays um, or puts out the bid for an air carrier to provide services to communities within Alaska. And Alaska is the, one of the only bidders that bids on this contract um, for Cordova and they are the ones that uh, provide essential air service and mail to Cordova via the government subsidy and the essential air contract. So some of the negative parts that maybe we didn't think about when we put this ordinance forward was who, who does this affect with more than two million dollars aircraft? Well it affects every contractor that's coming in here right now to help with Cordova Telephone's uh, expansion down the coast all of these helicopters that come here and do um, work are all more than two million dollars. So they're part of this um, this new ordinance. You have Ace Air Cargo, which already operates on mostly a shoestring budget anyways, and now you have to deal with them bringing uh, Amazon and the mail and all of these other things, and you're gonna charge them an additional fee to come to Cordova and do business. Um, and if anybody can't remember, we've already lost Raven to come to Cordova, another air carrier, because of slim margins. So that's a definite concern. Um, we're talking about a user group that's pretty small in Cordova. There's less than 45 aircraft that are based here. And of those 45 aircraft that are based here, none of those are more than $2 million. So just kind of the numbers that go along with that. Um, and then another thing is, you know, we, we're targeting a, a group that, that provides services to Cordova that have um, assets in a value excess of $2 million. Why aren't we charging a property tax on commercial vessels and tenders um, that are over $2 million doing business in Cordova? So just some things to think about. Um, the other one, the other one portion that I would like to point is how are you going to ever enforce this at the two state-owned airports in the community of Cordova? You have full-time employees out there trying to figure out who's landing when, where, how much, all of these helicopters, private jets, and uh, people coming to Cordova to leave money. So um, I would strongly suggest that that we reconsider this personal property tax, especially on somebody that's providing services and goods to uh, Cordova. Thanks. Thank you. Any other comments on agenda items? Steve Richards, uh, 103 Bluff Trail. Uh, again, on the uh, aircraft ordinance here, um, as Mark brought up, the state uh, owns both airports in town. So it seems that the personal property tax angle on this is a way to work around us saying we're going to put a landing fee in at an airport we don't own. Okay. Um, I guess, again, who is the target audience? Are our medevac flights, which are all more than $2 million and come in sometimes, you know, three or four times a week, are they going to be assessed? Um, and then I guess what it also comes down to is that the Cordova Airport is funded by grant assurances from the federal government, okay, which is the AIP program. All right, so if, if, the, if there's selective enforcement of a financial penalty or, you know, or a tax for doing business here, you would be opening the city up to a Title 13 lawsuit about whether or not there was discriminatory practices going on at the airport. Because if you decide, and as has been previously brought up, that at airports that have, you know, taxes and landing fees, and, and you know, landing fees really being the way that this is addressed, there's somebody there that monitors, that assesses. So are you going to have a full-time city position for somebody at both airports to keep track of the helicopters that are in town, because that's the only place to buy fuel, or the commercial air carriers that are using the large airport because that's where the instrument landing system is. Okay, so if you are saying, well, we're just gonna tax Alaska Airlines because we know when we're coming in and we see how often they're coming in, Alaska Airlines may not care, they'll jack our prices, but they also might say, 
hey, you know what? If you're going to tax us, you're going to have to tax everybody. And if you're not taxing everybody, then now you're discriminating against us. And if you're discriminating against us, that puts the grant assurances that fund the airport to the tune of millions of dollars a year at risk. So I got to think that also just the, the concept of a personal property tax does open sort of a Pandora's box of, you know, who, are, who and what are we going to tax next? And unfortunately, this kind of reminds me of when the COVID happened, we had an ordinance drawn up to close the airport without really looking at the mechanism in which that was even possible, which of course, since the city doesn't own the airport, it was not. So that's all I have to say. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Bob Rodriguez, 509 Fifth Street. Uh, I just want to ask that the author, whoever brought this forward, I'd like to hear their logic behind it. it is there some is there some services that the city is providing that must be paid for, other than police and fire? And the state does have their own fire equipment out there, but um, I, I get I think all citizens get it. You have to pay taxes if you're going to receive services. But what is the city providing out there uh, to justify the tax? And th not just this ordinance, but like the motor vehicle tax. Is there a fiscal note attached to it? Do we, can we project how much money is going to be gained from this, as well as the ordinance uh, for motor vehicle tax? I mean, you have, a, you have a zero turnout in the audience for the motor vehicle tax because nobody knows what you're asking for. You want a dollar a vehicle? You want 50 bucks a vehicle? Uh, I think more clarity might generate more public interest. Thank you all for your service. Uh, I know it's a tough job. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Barb Jewell, um, mile 2.2 Whiteshed Road, and I think I have a new address. It might be 3301 Whiteshed Road. I haven't quite memorized yet. Um, but thank you for that. I know the address project was hard and I'm glad you did. Anyways, I want to comment on both the um, aircraft tax and the motor vehicle tax. I certainly have been someone who said, let's look for ways to increase revenues to help the city to provide the services that we want and need to provide. However, these two items I'm a little surprised about. I guess the motor vehicle tax, it hasn't been updated since 1999, so maybe that's fair. Um, but I can't imagine, like like Mr. Barron said, like what's the fiscal note? Like really, how much are we going to raise from that? We don't. I don't know that we know, and it seems like that would be an important thing to know before we decide to impose another cost on individuals living in Cordova, right? Um, and I feel the same way about this airplane tax, providing the services that people who own aircraft over two million dollars, like those are services we need. Like, how are we going to get people to come and do this? When I look at communities and cities and states that are increasing their revenues in their communities, they're, they're providing incentives to businesses to come here. They're not making it cost more money to do business in their communities. So while I really appreciate that we're looking at every opportunity to increase revenue in the city, like, I really encourage us to look at ways to incentivize business to come here, not to shut it down my two cents. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Any other comments on agenda items? Seeing them, then we'll move along to the uh, chairperson's representative of the Boards of Commissions. Barb, do you want to come back and give us a report? <laughs> All right, but I got to get my notes. <laughs> So Barb Jewell, the chair of the Cordova School Board of Education. Um, I want to come tonight because it's the first day of school today. Um, and I've been assured by the superintendent that the students are going to come back tomorrow, <laughs> which I'm very happy about. Um, wanted, he asked me to put a plug because we we're hosting a number of events in the city, in the district this year. Um, the volleyball tournament, which I believe is in September, is a big one. Also basketball regions in March. And so big call out for volunteers. Um, if you could help spread the word. 
Um, I wanted to share a little bit about the summer and the National Guard who came here and as a part of the Shepherd Road project spent um, an inordinate amount of time helping the district and thus the city um, in terms of building maintenance and upkeep and repair and they did an enormous amount of work for us with just willing hands and hearts and we are so very grateful. Um, I think you probably know that they helped us move the library down into the lower level of the building so that we could expand classroom capacity in the elementary school, which is bursting at the seams. Um, and I was not excited about that, but what they've done down there is terrific and it's cozy and warm and inviting and it's going to be a great space for learning. Um, in addition, they did things like power wash and paint the high school. They refinished the kitchen and cafeteria floors, which the bid that we had for that was $80,000. Um, so just that one project alone saved us an enormous amount of money. They also cleared the brush behind the elementary school, which makes it safer in terms of line of sight and also being able to watch for bears and, and things like that. They replaced water fountains, they patched walls, they helped us finish the gym floors. And they just did so much work that improved our buildings. Um, appearance and security and all of it so I really want to make sure we're on record we've certainly thanked them as groups and individuals but I really wanted to put it out here in the public space because um, they were fabulous um, the other thing we wanted to say was thank you to the city streets and maintenance department for painting the crosswalks making sure that was done before first day of school coordinating with us about the flashing lights for the speed zones in front of the school and just in general coming over and asking how they could help. So um, Alex said that was a huge plus um, and we're super grateful about it. I think the other highlight is we were fully staffed for the first time in several years. Um, I think that has a lot to do with the district being a great district and a great place to work and also our superintendent's extraordinary recruitment efforts as well as several retired teachers agreeing to come back and fill spots for us. So we know we can't count on that forever, but we're excited about this year. So, any questions or comments? Okay. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Uh, appreciate that support. Any other boards and commissions <coughs> represented here tonight? Don't see any. So well, we don't have a student council report yet. So the consent calendar is before you. <coughs> um, Wendy Rainey is absent. Kristen Carpenter? Yes. Tom Baylor? Yes. Casey Kinsman? Yes. Kathy Sherman? Yes. Ken Jones? Yes. Dave Zastro? Yes. Consent calendar is approved. Hey, okay, thank you. Our minutes for any consent calendar. We don't have any bids, proposals, or contracts. It takes us down to reports of officers, mayor's report. I'm working on a couple of letters for us for the uh, King Salmon thing, but um, it's going on. And the uh, working with the clerk on a clerk project. We've got the same things coming up. The uh, Native Village is doing a uh, thing on September 7th, I believe. Uh, that email came out today. I think I forwarded, I had team to forward it to everybody. I don't know if it's gotten done yet or not, but um, that uh, flyer for the, their substance abuse and domestic violence awareness thing they're having for teens on September 7th. Um, the Pioneers Annual Convention is this fall, as well as the Historical Convention. I'll be involved in, in both of those. And uh, uh, this, it seems like there'll be a lot of activity this fall and spring, and it's good that we'll have uh, a bunch of big activities. District Volleyball is is a pretty big deal too. That's not until March, but uh, uh, Board of Fish is here this year. Uh, so this fall we'll have several conventions going on. Um, so anyway, things 
seems to be going along. So that's my report. If anybody has any questions. Okay, uh, Sam, manager report. Um, so the 95% um, plan review from um, EAC Rear happened last week. Um, uh, Mike. Um, sorry, thanks. So the 95% um, EAC Ware drawing meeting was last week, uh, Kevin attended, and we will be working with DNR to move through that um, process to, I, we're not taking ownership of the weir, we're taking ownership of the weir to be built and the land underneath it. Um, DOT will be given permission to get rid of the weir that they, that someone in DOT owns. Um, so that's moving forward. I worked, talked with Barry Hooper. We're going to work together on the MOU for maintenance. That's more of a city and DOT <laughs> agreement. So we're going to try to figure out how, what departments from DOT can help us with that and how that will work. Um, we have asked for an o &M manual for the year, for the structural side. Um, and DOT has made it clear they won't be responsible for fish habitat um, stuff, but that's fine. That's already taken care of. Um, so we got a lot of personnel stuff. If anybody's looked at the um, webpage, you know, we have a few jobs. We've had some interviews. We've got a couple offers out. So it feels a little positive. Um, I'll find them more at the end of the week. Uh, if we get some positions filled, um, finance is doing well. Uh, we're full in and out, I should say, of Starnik into Cassell, working through a couple little account things that kind of like went to outer space during that transition in the computer world. Maybe they're related to that computer. <laughs> um, and um, we are also working, bank recs are moving forward. We got all the information to the auditors. We're waiting for them to give us a date for completion. Um, so that's so good. Uh, we received a Marin reimbursement, which is always a good thing. Uh, for five million, we are not at final completion yet. So we moved the five million into account to get some good interest earning on that. We move 5.5 over there. So we'll keep it there as long as we can. And then um, we'll do a final payment to turn again. And then we'll have to do some state um, reimbursements because they're tied to finishing. And um, so the electrical and the drive down are the big issues that need to get completed. There's punch lists, but those are the two big ones. Um, we are working towards getting it all wrapped up. I hate to even say a date. I want to say September at the very least that we can get the punch list through those kinds of things. The other issue is the million dollars that we got from this, the representative. It has to be a new grant agreement. They haven't even started that. So I don't know when that's going to happen. Um, I was hoping they would have started on it by now. They are going to come next week for a tour to Merit. Um, I've been working on the budget schedule. Uh, so the last meeting in December is 12-18. We have to have the resolution five days prior, advertised five days prior to the final passage. So that puts us around, you know, the um, 11th, the first meeting's on the 4th. So maybe our goal could be to have that resolution ready to roll on the 4th. Susan could advertise. We could pass it on the 18th. So on that note, I'd like to have a work session <laughs> at the next meeting, which we can talk about in a pending, pending a calendar, um, to talk about kind of where we're at, revenue, ideas, um, some of the things. <coughs> that are going to be impacts to 24 and 25. The other thing um, is the timeline for is the ballot. So we had talked about um, a ballot proposal for having the finance director not have to live in Cordova. 
So we have to do the whole process of getting the language, getting it written, getting it passed by this council so that it can go on the ballot. And we'll need to do that before, Susan would go prefer before the first meeting in December. So we'll be working on that. Um, yes, yeah, it's busy, lots of different things going on. Um, we are working and should be moving cars out of Northville that have been there for way too long before the snow flies. We're cleaning, we cleaned out of impound lots, cars a bunch, and now we're gonna move. We're taking those that are jumped straight to the landfill after we drain them, if there's anything left in them. And um, if they need to go to the impound, we go to the impound lot. So that was a big, that's the chief, got the new chiefs ready to roll in. So that's really good, it's been great. And DMP, unfortunately, is still down. The computers are fixed. They've been fixed for a little bit. Uh, we just don't have staff. So we're still looking for a staff person to be 25 years or older and five years of driving experience. If you know anybody, send them out. And that's all I have <coughs> if you have any questions. Yeah. Um, we just asked for an update on our swimming pool. Oh, thanks. Yeah. So they're here and they're working on it. Uh, it's going to be a day by day thing. So the, the liner glue is super, super good. And they're having a little bit of, you know, they're working, it's taking longer for them to get it off than they thought. There was some water under the liner. Uh, it's still unknown what the shell what the shape of the shell is, especially on the bottom. They can see calcium around the top of it and look at it today. Um, the guy's optimistic. He's done a lot of these things. He's like, oh, I've seen where the whole liner just, you know, gets sucked down in the pool when the aluminum shell gives out. So you guys are doing good. <laughs> so that's good. <laughs> so we'll just keep updating. It'll be, you know, day by day. But um, yeah, he seems. Any other questions for the manager? Online, anybody have questions for the manager? Okay, and uh, Colin's not here for a report? No. Sorry. Okay, clerk's report. Tina. Um, Susan didn't leave a report, but I can say property tax. The first installment is due the end of this month, well, which is the 31st. It's a Saturday, so it's actually the next business day is the deadline, which I believe is Tuesday, September 3rd, for those who pay their tax themselves. Don't forget. Any questions for the clerk? It's your last chance. Yeah. <laughs> no more questions. Okay, correspondence. Got three letters in there. Yeah, I've got a comment on one. Yeah, go ahead, Tom. <clears throat> yeah, Mr. Sorensen's letter kind of drives home the point that I was speaking to in our last meeting that we need to notify the public better than what we have been. And actually, I thought we gave staff direction on another piece of property that's well, it was up for sale, and then the person decided not to buy it. But if you all recall, we had the neighbor come in here and want to know why he wasn't notified. That discussion led the staff or the council directing staff that a minimum notify the neighbors of the property and put a sign up. And now that was done at that piece of property, evidently, it wasn't done on this piece of property, and I don't think it was done. On the other piece of property that we just decided on Center Drive to just basically hand over the first person that asked for it and not go through our process. So it's kind of disappointing to me. <clears throat> I think I've expressed that before I was there with the inception of this process, but in our own code it says, uh, yeah, let me get to it here. It's the uh, city council has determined that the public will benefit from a uniform and standard process, which land designation in Cordova are documented and communicated to the public for the purpose. Standardized 
And that's what we have. When somebody wanted a piece of property, they got an opportunity, they went out for bid and everybody got an opportunity. So I'm gonna speak more on this later, but this is why I was really disappointed and disagree with the decision council made at the last meeting on land disposal. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Any other comments on the letters that we received? Yes, Kristen. I just had a question. So there were some pieces of correspondence, an email and a letter from CDFU about the potential for declaring a fisheries disaster. And then there was some information submitted in there about the process for declaring a fisheries disaster. But it wasn't clear to me. I don't know if anybody knows the answer to this, but there's the chart. Now, page number federal fisheries disaster process flow chart. It says disaster request submitted to the governor. And then on the next page, there's a bunch of steps, and it says an eligible entity must request a fishery resource disaster determination. So I'm wondering who submits? Does anybody know who submits the disaster declaration and what an eligible entity is or what constitutes an eligible entity? I mean, maybe that's, I, I don't know. I don't know if that's a CEFU question. Yeah. Mr. Mayor. Yeah, go ahead. Jones. Yep. The last two have come from the city of Cordova. CDFU initiated, approached the city, and then the city sent in the request to the governor, I believe, is how it worked. Yeah, do, do you know, uh, Councilor Jones, if the season has to be completed yet, or can we start that process? I think that I would recommend waiting and uh, seeing how things end up. We could maybe put it on the agenda for the second September meeting. I don't think officially that the season has to close, but when you're drafting your resolution and all the whereas, it would help to have more final numbers, I believe. And uh, also there's still a coho fishery that, it, the fish Department of Fish and Game just announced today that Prince William Sound coho sport fish limit was reduced to one because of a very poor return that hasn't affected it won't affect our delta uh sport limit but um you know there is potential that we might want to add more than just pink salmon to the request i know the chums were also pretty weak uh i don't have the exact numbers in front of me though and uh, it looks like coho might also qualify yeah that's what i was thinking the same thing that uh you have a lot better data to back up our claim once the season's more complete anyway so but that's certainly looking like uh, something that we will be doing uh, this year uh, Susan has been in contact with Justin they're working together I wish they would provide support a little more Readily, as there still aren't paid out for 2020 disaster <laughs> yet, but uh, considerable it is time. what it is. Yeah, it's uh, you know people that have a disaster, it's a disaster today. It's not a disaster five years from now. Well, it could still be, but you know, you're going to be lucky to be in business still mm -hmm. with that kind of a delay. So even FEMA gets money out faster than that. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Um, I guess one more comment on that. So part of the reason for the, uh, I think for the delay on the 2020, at least for the pink salmon, is that the initial request from the city did not include pink salmon because it was pushed through in August. Um, it was only including sockeye king and chum. And pink and coho also qualified that year, but it took a follow-up uh, resolution later that fall to add it. And then when it went to the governor's desk, he approved the first one and then got the second one like two weeks later and then approved that one. And it, it just, it ended up turning it into two different ones and it really delayed the whole process quite a bit. So that's, I think the, the waiting is gonna be more advantageous um, and could actually end up ex expediting the process if we just wait and see what all species qualify and then put in the request. Yeah. Okay, sound, sounds good. Any other comments on the correspondence? Okay, then we'll move along to ordinances and resolutions. Ordinance 1219, an ordinance of the Council of the City of Cordova, Alaska, amending Chapter 5.38 by ending a motor vehicle registration tax to increase the motor vehicle registration tax levied on registered vehicles 
within the city. This is second reading. So moved for purpose of discussion. I'll second that. Councilor Carpenter. Yeah, I just um, moved it so we could get the motion on the table and so we could have the discussion about it. Um, I think, <coughs> as I understand, the main reason is that the, it just hasn't been updated since 1999, so. Yes, that's one of the um, revenue generating ideas, and mm -hmm. it will go, it is money that goes into streets and the general fund to get <laughs> more perma patch mm -hmm. and keep the roads going. So we use it, that's a, the end goal. Mm -hmm. um, and I am trying to get an overall estimate, but I have an email and a phone call into DMV as well as a lawyer does, but we don't have a DMV person right now. And so I don't have access to the number of registrations to get a, a, a amount. Yeah, and um, Cheryl's working through the intricate way that the money is submitted and sent back and forth with the DMV. So next meeting, or we will have that, what that looks like for the revenue generated. Um, you know, we do get about 50 grand in revenue overall for the DMV. So we get, for instance, for road tests, we get the entire fee is given to the city. We get 50% of um, license issued and those kinds of things and then they take a hundred percent of the um, tax and then they resubmit it back to us but yeah I'm, I'm, I will never be an accountant but because of the way that is done then it has to go through different GL codes so we're working through that um, and we will have that but without a number and which registration it's for it's hard to calculate value, but at least we would know. We will know what we've been getting, and so that'll be helpful. We can give an idea. Okay. Anything else? Did you have a? What are you gonna do? Uh, well, yes. I guess I understand uh, um, that the numbers needed to be modified. Yes. So, so yeah, I can explain that. So the numbers for the. Um, Five thousand, or the twelve thousand to eighteen and eighteen thousand pounds over, were not done against the nineteen ninety nine. They were done against the state tax, and so they weren't. It wasn't to our benefit, so we're putting it in at the right amount. Um, and there is printed versions of that if people want to see those. Uh, it's kind of, it's a little bit lengthy because it's a whole columns in the table, whole rows in the table. But basically, it's just bringing it up to the right amount. Uh, the lawyers don't feel like that's a substantial change that would require to uh, re, rehab, rehab another public hearing, but we can. We have a lot of time with this ordinance. We don't have to get it to DMV tomorrow. We have till December, so we could um, do a second public hearing. We could have some totals on the things, and this will allow people to see what the amendments are look like. And to be the other revenue estimates. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, we will have that by the next meeting. So, so do we need to make this amendment? Well, yeah, maybe. Uh, I, I, I would. That's what I would move to do. That we just. Yeah. Either have another second reading, uh, whatever the proper way to do that is. Let's get. I would move to refer back to staff, but the easiest way. Well, I think we need to get this. Yeah, the idea is. Because we, we've already had first reading. So we need to get this in there and then refer it to staff. Or so table we, it to the next. We meeting. could amend it. Yeah. And I would amend. Table it to the September 4th meeting with well, the amendment. However, table it or refer to staff either way. But uh, we need to get the amendment in there somehow. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we'll right. come back to the amendment next time. Do we need to read the amendment, or are we just going to state that this is the amendment? Well, I just say per per, per amendment. Were you going to do it? Or? Sure. I mean, yeah. So I, I I didn't know if you. 
I wanted I to speak I, as the second to the motion, but I propose but, a, uh, an amendment to the dollar figures in the table so that it's um, calculated based on our 1999 levels, right? That was the difference um, as opposed to the state's current tax levels. Yeah. So I'd like to propose that we amend the table so that we're at least showing the rates that we would actually be proposing. And that's a 5.38.020. Yeah. Um, okay. yeah. Yes. Is there a second to that? Second. Any discussion on that? No. Clear to everybody. All those in favor of the amendment? Say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, now I, I would suggest that we still discuss anything that needs to be, if there's anything anybody has, right. uh, serious one way or the other about it. So just for, for some clarification, my understanding, Sam, with this, this is us as the city collecting a look uh, some additional money than what we already collect from the state. So the city is adding yes, so a, a piece to it so on top of what we already get back. Is that correct? So in nineteen ninety nine, the city passed this mm -hmm. not not this exact same thing, but this process was passed, and it has not been increased since nineteen ninety nine. So we're adding a fee on top of the state registration tax and then the state kicks that back to us and in the last um packet there's you know all the other town municipalities that do that i mean kodiak speaking of kodiak they have a very high um, addition onto theirs so it's a wide range of um, how much money is tacked on but the idea in 96 when it was passed by the legislation was so that the cities could get additional revenue, an additional revenue and, and put it towards their streets and general funds. And then just a point of clarification, we, we need to do this in December and it won't go into effect until 2026, correct? That's fiscal year 2026. And I assume that's state fiscal year 2026. No. That would, that would probably be really good to come back in if we're redoing a read back on this to like, yeah. this is when, so the public knows. Yeah. This is when you can expect this. And uh, definitely, definitely totals. I think the public needs to know what, what needs to be there. Yeah. So, uh, all right. Any other comments strongly one way or the other? Again, the, the idea is we're gonna refer this to staff, so. Well, we still have to. Yeah, I guess I've got a comment. We have to what? Vote on the amendment. We did. Yeah. Oh. oh, right, sorry. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, uh, is that right. Councilor Jones. Yeah, yeah, thanks. I, uh, I'm not really inclined to support this. Um, I do support putting it back to staff. I do think that that is a uh, substantial enough change to warrant a, a second reading, and I appreciate that that's the direction we're heading. Um, the reason why I'm not really in support of this is I just don't think that it I don't think it broadly hits, you know, enough people because all of the nonprofits and government agencies that also have vehicles and wear and tear on our roads and use our roads and everything, they're exempt from these registration taxes. And so I would like to see us pursue revenue sources that are more distributed equally to the community and with the property tax being 50% of the community pays everything. And now, you know, this tax still half the community pays, half is exempt to just, that kind of just bugs me a little bit. Um, also, you know, we're just talking about a fisheries disaster, a good portion of our community makes their income either from fish processing or fishing. And uh, a lot of those community members have seen a 70 to 80% decrease in their income this year. And uh, I think that raising taxes on a year when we're also declaring a fisheries disaster is disingenuous and I don't think we should be pursuing that right now. We should be pursuing cuts and trying to alleviate the pressure in our community. We've seen a huge number of businesses move out of town in the last five years and it's, uh, you know, more taxes isn't going to turn the tide on that. So, thanks. Thank you, Ken. Any other comments on this? I have a question. Yeah, go ahead, Tom. So, if you know the answer to this, so tell me what the 
Somebody comes in and registers a, a 2022 Ford pickup truck. What does it cost them today, and what will it cost them if, with this new resolution moves forward? Any? Um, uh, well, if we could get that for the next meeting, I think that would be helpful to us, just to kind of really get an idea of how much we talk and individually. That, yeah, I think it's in the tables. We can have a, for the next yeah. meeting, we'll have a, a few examples, you know, a, an old beater, a mid-range car, a new car. <laughs> well, that, I mean, that's something to look at, too, because the, you know, if you look at these, and you look at the increases, they go down over the time frame. Yeah, but we, we should be able to come. Yeah, we'll, we'll yeah I mean, we can. Just, I think the yeah, that would be helpful to me. And just a side note is my, my daughter's currently buying a new vehicle in the state of Washington where she works, and it's going to cost her $500 to get her place. For a so, year or two? Uh, that's the register at $500. I don't know what it is for the place every year. It's expensive. It's annual. Yeah, I think they go by value. Yeah. 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 I know we're not talking nowhere near that, but I'm just just an example of other places do pay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I'd be looking for a motion to refer to staff or table or whatever you want to. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to uh, make a motion to refer this to staff. A second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to refer to staff. Any objection to that? All those in favor of referring to staff then say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. The staff knows what we're doing there, right? Okay, mm -hmm. Ordinance 1220, an ordinance of the Council of the City of Cordova, Alaska, amending Cordova Municipal Code, Title V, Revenue and Finance, to add Chapter 5.08, Property Tax of Aircraft, removing the exemption for property tax on aircraft stored or landed in Cordova with a fair market value of $2 million or more and amending CMC 5.05.030 clarify the personal property is exempt from property tax except as otherwise stated. This is first reading. Can I talk about it for a second? Um, After the motion. Sure. Well, Before or after whatever you want. Does anybody want to make a motion? So moved for purpose of discussion. Yeah, second. Okay, yeah. Make a motion and refer to. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so if we've been talking about this for quite a while at these meetings, all these different kinds of revenue sources to look into, and this was one of them. So we did the background out, so this is what we're here to do is vet it. So it's great to have some public comment. Appreciate it. Um, I wrote all your thoughts and quest some questions and ideas down, and this is what we wanted to hear. So, as the memo says, we still have some homework to do at the federal level. There are federal rules. Um, so, we still have some homework to do, so I'm glad to have these questions to also bring back to the lawyer. Um, the intent <coughs> really is to not target out just Alaska Airlines um, and there are other places who have DOT airports who have this kind of tax. Um, those are logistics that we have to work out but they are required federally if this is passed because it's a federal uh, tax that you can imply. Well, no, that's not quite the right words. We it's legal by the federal government to put those out, this tax out there. So they have a private jets or you know contracted jets. Those kind of places do have a requirement to file with us if we impose this tax. So that is one way. You know, most companies at a large scale, larger companies will follow those mandated laws. That is one way we can get some of the, the other companies that have helicopters or jets that fly in here that are contracted. Um, so that was
was one of the ones that I heard asked how we would track it. Those are some of the ways we'll do it. We're working with some other communities, such as Dillingham, um, on how they manage those things. So I guess that's mostly, I had it. There were some good things, medic back flights. How do you cross my mind? I've been on a few, I should have thought of those. <laughs> um, helicopters um, are also, no, uh, hadn't crossed my mind on the cost, what those cost, but that's a good, those are all good. And we'll check them out and see what that looks like and um, how those have been done other places. And yeah, that's all I have. Okay, thank you, Council Member Carpenter. Um, <clears throat> so it sounds like you're going to be asking questions about um, like enforcement. That was something that came up. Yeah, and some of that other is, communities do that. Well, most of it's just it's a federally requirement mm -hmm. once you impose this tax. So you rely, and companies, large companies, pay attention to that. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, I'm not sure what our options are if we, um, in terms of waiting until we get some more of this information. Yeah, so if you, if you want to refer it back to staff, that's fine. Yeah. And we can bring it back. I would prefer that you didn't vote it down unless you right. really don't want to talk about this anymore. Mm -hmm. Because once you do that, then we have to do a substitute ordinance. And it's just this other amount of paperwork. So that's your choice. However, you, if you don't want to discuss it any further, then yeah, no, that's OK. That's what my <laughs> I guess I would just say it's a little bit, I'm, I'm thankful that people have come in and weighed in on it. It's a little bit frustrating because we all wrestle with how do we plug these holes in our budget? We've got a fisheries disaster on our hands and we're gonna probably lose, I don't know, I would guess at least five or seven, six hundred thousand dollars from our budget for 2025 and we've gotta make that up. And I'm not saying we're gonna make that up with this, I'm not, <laughs> by any means, but we struggle all the time with how to close that revenue gap. And so we come up with ideas and then people come in and say, don't do that, don't do that. And so it's like, how do, how do we do this? Um, I did hear what Barb was saying about trying to create incentives for businesses to come into town, which is awesome. I, I, I think that takes time. It takes a while to build that up. So, that, but that would certainly be worth. Um, and we are doing, we are working on that. Mm -hmm. the, yeah. Under tax code. Yeah. Incentives. Yeah. So anyway, those are my thoughts. I don't, I don't have any great insights. Yeah, but I have nothing more to add. I, again, just the concerns brought up by, by folks here that are in, in the room and how we monitor it, I think there's so much we don't know. And so I think referring it um, back to staff is definitely the way to go. I, I, I don't want to say we don't want to discuss it anymore after yeah. seeing your desire not to just vote it down. But uh, I have a lot of concerns with this proposal. Okay. okay, is there, I guess the question is, is do we want staff to continue putting time into this? Or is there any appetite for this? idea at all. Yeah, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, go ahead, Councilor Jones. Yeah, I would be on the side of the fence of voting it down and, and not, you know, giving clear direction to staff not to spend any more time, especially not any more lawyer time on this. I, I don't think we want to, I don't want to pursue this. Um, I, I think a personal property tax in general is a slippery slope that we don't want to get into as a community. We've stayed away from it purposefully in the past. This has been brought up at multiple workshops and always been we've always shied away from it. Um, in one form or another, personal property taxes in general, we've shied away from. We just raised the sales tax a whole percent. We raised the sales tax cap, uh, you know, 60 percent or whatever it was. And uh, yeah, I think we've raised quite a bit of revenue in the last 12 calendar months and um, we haven't even had any budget discussions yet or any workshops. so. I, I would like to see us just vote this down. I'm, there's just too much. I mean, we, we heard it from the audience. I, I don't think I can as eloquently word it as, as these uh, pilots who came and talked to us, but um, it's, there's a lot of ramifications to this beyond just taxing Alaska Airlines and the med flights and everything. It's, I just don't see it as something that I want to have us pursue any further. Thanks. Thank you, Councilor. Yeah, I, I... 
I guess my thoughts on it are it's, it's difficult for us to discuss anything until it gets in writing. And then once it gets in writing, then we can hear our comments and, and uh, go there. So I, you know, I'm not disappointed that it was there. I certainly myself, although I don't get a vote, I, I don't support this, but I think that we need to, I don't want to refer it to staff and have them spend a whole bunch more time on it and then come up to council in three months after another ten thousand dollars of lawyer time and then we decide no nope, nobody <laughs> nobody wants to touch this thing so if we're gonna if we're gonna go there now is the time to to vote it down and, and let staff work on other things but that's council's prerogative i either need a motion to or i guess if there's no other motion to refer then we can we can vote on this one when everybody's done talking go ahead councillor um, yeah, well, I, you know, at first blush, I was in favor of this, and, and I appreciate the audience, and that's why we have these public hearings. Um, it was great that they came for, forward with some information that I didn't even think about, like the city manager. I didn't think about uh, Ace Air Cargo. I didn't think about med flights. I kind of, in my back of my mind, was thinking, well, this is the last airlines. And they're going to jump our ticket prices up for a little bit, but it will help the, our budget. So I... I commend staff for bringing this forward. I think it was the right thing to do. Uh, we asked them to bring us options, and they did it. But after, uh, I would say, when the facts changed, so is my opinion, uh, I would no longer support this either. So, um, yeah, I guess I would, I would vote to turn it down. I don't know what kind of motion do we want to bring we forward. We don't need any other motion if you're going to vote eventually. So, any other comments? Regarding this, hearing none, then uh, now if, if we, you don't want it, vote no. So, all those in favor, say aye. All those opposed, say aye. 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 Okay, oppose unanimously, so you can take that one off your. Let's just cross all the questions on my list, right? Done. <laughs> Okay, it moves us along to unfinished business. We have none. No miscellaneous business. We have the pending agenda calendar. You said you wanted to do a workshop next meeting? Yeah, the work session, um, it feels like it was warm, but it had like a little more than an hour. Because I would really like to get direction. You know, do you want to continue looking at these revenue ideas? Do you want to try to focus on different things? We have, this is two, we have the, another one in the works, so, uh, fish box in the works, so, none of these are home runs. <laughs> not that they're not good. So what, are you thinking before the next meeting? Or, yeah. or oh, you mean, I mean before. Separate day, or? I could do either way. If you don't want to come at five or six, or we could do it a separate day. Um, it would either be come at five the and fourth. go through or a separate day. What's council's so, preference? Yeah, Monday is the holiday. So it'd be the third, fourth, fourth. Fourth, fourth is the next meeting. Um, next I'll, Wednesday. I'll start. I, I prefer it the same day. Person. I would too. Yeah. Okay. So do you want to do I'll five three. then? Okay, yep. five o'clock. Five o'clock on the fourth? Um, Clarification. Yeah. We're talking about agenda like 11 on here, this work session, financial sales exemption. And that's what I'm looking at here, future agenda item. I so think she's talking about budget. Uh, we're getting the budget. We're getting the budget. Okay. Discussion. I just heard in there talking about um, alternate Red revenues and stuff. So I'm looking at I like some number 11 on here, which says work session, financial, sales tax, pre write, alternate I revenues. Don't. I wasn't anticipating bringing the ordinance of the rewrite of the sales tax. Okay. I'm, again, just looking at this, I didn't know if that was part of it. I um, budget items, if we're talking about it, I maybe besides that, I would still like to see maybe some numbers or something pursued. If there's, it seemed like last time when I brought it up, there's an appetite for it, um, is the some kind of exception on food. That can be a reduced tax or something. Oh, 
Okay, well, I have a, like a list of 15 questions on that. Okay. So I could either eat, I'll, I'll yeah, that's a discussion. We need to figure out, we need to narrow that down. Like, sure. what does that mean? What does that look like? What is your expectation? So I, can, I can tell you what other communities have done just real quick. It generally follows like the WIC program. Yep. That's what qualifies okay. as, a, as a food item. So that's just a point you in one direction at least. So. Yeah, we have that in. Yeah. Okay. Anything else on the pending agenda? Well, just with that discussion, uh, bring forward how you're going to replace that lost income. Yep, yeah, absolutely. I just I want to see what the number would be potential, and I know it's all speculative, but um, as we just heard from our community, you know, times are clean, and if there's an opportunity, then that'd be great. To explore. Yes, please. And let the public hear it, so they can decide is this something they want, and how are they going to replace that? Just throwing it out there. Anything else? Uh, Mr. Mayor? Yeah, go ahead. So as far as the pending agenda, um, the uh, fisheries disaster, can we put it on for the either the second September meeting or the first October meeting? Uh, work on something there. Yeah, I think Susan's been working with Jess on yeah. um, that stuff. But yeah, we'll put it, uh, I think, the second meeting in September, maybe? We can coordinate with Jess and see We'll coordinate with Jess and make sure that When is the second meeting in September, I guess, what calendar date? 18th. Okay, I think maybe we should probably put it for the first October meeting then, because that's still right in the middle of the coho season. Maybe we'd know by then, but I don't think the numbers will be final until October. October the second. first meeting is the second in October. Okay. Yeah, I think that probably would be a better date. Okay, if we can do that. When do we start advertising for seats that are opening up in November? Oh, yeah. Start I don't know. That. It has to go on the ballots, so it's got to be kind of that same timeline where... Oh, no, I mean seats on the... Commissions and boards. Um, doesn't go on ballots, but, oh, but yeah. 30 so days before? I'm not sure. Anyway, keep your, keep your ears open for and uh, your recruiting uh, skills on to recruit some people for each of the boards and commissions. We'll have two to three positions opening them up. So uh, November is our turnover time. So uh, we're going to need some, some public participation there. Anything else? No, the penny agenda. Yeah. Okay, hearing none, then we'll move along to audience comments on anything you'd like to talk about. We lost most of our <laughs> public. We've got one. We lost our audience. <laughs> Bob Rodriguez and Kevin are still here. That's, that's it. Everybody else bugged out after I had 14. So, okay, council comments then. We'll start online. Uh, Councilmember Sherman. Yeah, thanks. I, I missed part of the discussion. I apologize for that, but um, it was a, a good meeting. And Sam, I really appreciated your uh, all your comments and you kind of ahead of us, I think. Um, that was my same thing with the motor vehicle tax was just seeing those uh, numbers in there. So thanks on that. And um, I think we should just clarify for the public that all these things are, it's like Kristen, Councilman, Carpenter said, we're, we're just bringing these things forward, looking for any possible revenue we can find um, and trying to see the best choices that we have. And so I think it's great that the public paid attention and came and commented tonight. So we'll just keep going through the process. Hey, thank you, Kathy. Uh, who else on my uh, Councilman Jones. Yeah, thanks. Sorry I couldn't be there in person. I uh, figured I would spare all you guys from the case of the Cordova crud that's going around. So, um, yeah, I'm just attending via the phone from home. But, uh, yeah, as far as the revenue goes, I understand the city needs revenue to, to function. But, you know, I just, I'm still pretty 
firm in the camp that we just raised quite a bit of revenue last year with the uh, one percent increase on sales tax and and raising the tax cap and you know also assessments have gone up i know we lowered the uh the mill rate uh partially um to account for them so those assessments going up but ultimately the cost of living in town has gone up drastically we we had five increases on our utilities since i mean this is just since i've been on council um we you know the probably two million dollars more on the tax rolls on property assessments going up and uh our harbor rates have doubled in the last 10 years and uh i, I just i don't know i think that in an ideal world we you know can have fully staffed everything and everybody can have an assistant and we can have seven cops and uh, everything and you know have our cake and eat it too but unfortunately it's not a perfect world so um we you know we have kind of an inflated budget ever since covid and some of that covid money's gone now and uh i think maybe we need to look at making some cuts like we did back in 2016. so thanks okay thank you councillor uh, councilman baylor yeah thanks for everybody to be there i wish i had the answers for the budgets and things going on but i don't you know it's easy i get a lot of people ask me uh you know where are the cuts going to come from and i can't tell you where they can come from uh, i think the streets the uh chip ceiling was one of the best things put over ever did you know it's 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 a lot healthier and, and it's great for cars and stuff and and that's a big cost to maintain and we haven't had that money to, to do it in the recent years so I don't know. It, it takes a lot of dollars to run this city. I don't know how the manager's going to do it, but I wish her well. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. I think it's a group effort. I was going to say, yeah. I think we're all there. I really don't make any decisions. God's my disaster. Yeah, I, as well, I appreciate uh, the uh, um, effort you put in, uh, Sam, and trying to find creative ways to gen generate revenue and uh, your willingness to discuss things openly and admit that you know nothing's perfect you know we're just out there trying to see what works and you know community participation is everything i really appreciate everybody coming in to voice their opinions um i i i i feel pretty solid on the vehicle registration obviously you know i think that's something that needs to be updated I'm looking forward to seeing the numbers when you when you produce them um really happy to hear about the EAC rear rear EAC weird 20 95 percent drawings complete I'm excited to see that happen and um, it'll be great to have that done out of the way the hot potato finally set down so yeah, um, we'll get there yeah that's pretty exciting um, and again just appreciate everything you're doing Sam. thank you council member carpenter sure I would just echo um, thanking Sam for all the work you're putting into researching these options and bringing it to us you know it's hard to, at least we have something to to talk about we can't talk about it without information so that helps us uh, hash through the process and I appreciate that um, excited about the weir excited about hearing job offers are being made that's great news and um, and I wanted to echo the thanks to the Air National Guard I know they did uh, a ton of work on the school. They helped me a lot with the Alaska Salmon Runs, which was a tiny little part of their time here, but it just, I think, speaks to how willing they were to jump in and do things around the community. They were a huge asset while they were here, so I very much appreciate it. And I, I guess it's a little late to be saying this. I don't know how they got thanked for their time, but I hope. I was going to say there is some way we can recognize them yeah, officially. Yeah, yeah, I don't know if there's a way to. I mean, I, they were uh, engaged through Native Village of Yak, I think, so maybe we just need to... We can do a letter of thanks. I'm sure the school has, but we can either do a letter or we can do a proclamation either way. Yeah, that is right. Yeah. It's a proper letter. I, I just know that there was, it wasn't just one National Guard group. No, it was, it was several. Past, so I mean, um, yeah. That gets a little tricky, but probably a proclamation or yeah. something like that. Then broadly can go out. We'll just do a proclamation. Yeah, yeah that'd be great. Easier than and then it can be sent to all those different units. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. But yeah, okay. and then invite them back for next year. Right. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. 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 There's more work to do. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So you got that, Tina? We'll do a proclamation. Yeah. yeah. On that. Thank you. Okay, and Vice Mayor Kinsman. Yeah, I just I want to really highlight the public coming out, and I. Oh, 
I called the, the public out, I think, a fair amount, and this was a, a, a positive example. You showed up, you had facts, it was clean, it was clear, you were able to do some persuasion, and here we are. So, thank you, and let's just keep at, keep coming to these meetings, as we already discussed up, but we're right, that we, we have to get these things on the agenda so that there can be a true public hearing and process, that's just the process, so uh, thank you that. The other side of that is uh, next to, uh, Sam and staff, your staff, and, and, and doing that. And I know it probably feels like you're beating your head against the table, like we just use these re resources on this, and it's gone. But thank you, it's the process. Um, you're learning the process. You might be hating the process, but you're still learning it. So. Um, and I'm looking forward, thank you for being proactive on getting uh, a work session going. That to me is very important and for me the sooner we can get going on it, the better we can do because the last budget cycle was brutal. <laughs> so if we can spread it out over a longer period of time, that is awesome and we're not doing it in the middle of the holidays. So appreciate you being proactive on that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I guess what I had to say kind of echoes what uh, what his mayor Kinsman had to say. Like, you know, the, the ordinances just because it's on our agenda does not mean that it's a done deal. I mean, that's why we have to discuss it. You know, we got these rules of ex parte and conflicts of interest, so we can't talk about certain things to certain people or even each other, for that matter. So uh, this is our time that we get to discuss it and. Um, we appreciate the comments coming in. Just because you see it on the agenda does not mean that it's done. So if you've got a feeling one way or the other, give it to us either by a letter or an email or uh, coming and, and telling us that's that's the only way we can know uh, the public input. And, and it's better oftentimes, as we did this evening, to vote something down to save staff's time on, on it if we're not going to go there. Um, then, you know, for the last, I don't know, a couple of years, we've been mentioning this type of thing. So uh, work goes on it gradually, and, and now we've come to a point where, where we don't think it's worth uh, doing anymore. So that's appreciated. I want to, uh, since this is the last meeting, um, for a couple of our employees, I would uh, express appreciation to Tina for her years of effort here and uh, I'm sure after she is officially gone we'll invite her back for some formal recognition but we, <laughs> we appreciate your work and, and also Barb Weber I think her last day is the end of this month unless mm -hmm. she's extended once again. Nope. Uh, <laughs> so uh, appreciate all the years of effort that she's put in and, <coughs> and uh, the uh, extensions on her retirement that she's done to get us through our changing in the systems and get, getting us back up to today. So appreciate all of that. Mr. Mayor? Yes, go ahead. Um, also, Dennis Keo will be retiring at the end of the month from the museum. Okay, yeah, okay. Uh, appreciate that. And so we've got some some proclamations of appreciation to to divvy out once, uh, once that happens. But uh, yeah, he's put a lot of a lot of work in over the years uh, made that museum, uh, helped make that museum what it is, so we appreciate uh, the efforts there too, so. Okay, there being no executive session, correct? Correct. Okay, then our business being concluded, we will adjourn the meeting. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for hanging with us, Bob. Thanks, Kevin, for the Thank you. 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 Thank